Hello, and welcome to the Art of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane, and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop, and trust your intuition through interviews with other guests and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to the Art of Intuition podcast. I'm Susan Jane, your host for this podcast. And today we're going to be talking about serendipity and it's an intuitive thing. Now, why I'm talking about this is because um, I had a guest on due to come on today and she has actually called in sick so she can't make it. And the funny thing was I just was had got to the stage where I too um, am fighting a head cold. So I really didn't feel like chatting too much. So it sort of worked in quite nicely. And um, we've booked it in for next week, so she will be on. And I've actually got two other ladies booked in as well, one from the UK and one from um, America. So we're going to have a lovely lot of guests coming on, which will be really nice. And these ladies are wonderful. You're really going to enjoy it. But today I thought we'd talk about serendipity because serendipity is the occurrence and development of, of events by chance or in a happy or beneficial way. Now, often when we have this serendipity, it can be um, created originally from a negative event and consequently we've, we've, we've gone another way and we've changed our, our thought pattern or our idea, we've headed down a different direction and then this serendipity starts to come about. So we start to receive these um, happy and beneficial things. Now, when I thought about that, I started looking at synchronicity because I know synchronicity is is quite an intuitive thing and when we start looking at synchronicity, it's more about being aware that we're actually synchronising different things. Um, And so when we're starting to look at this synchronising of our thoughts and, and, and what's happening, is that creating that serendipity? Is that creating that positive Um, event of chance or a beneficial way so I started sort of going into it and look to be honest serendipity and and synchronicity are are really quite similar serendipity is probably the end result whereas synchronicity is the action and what's happening around it so that's why I think it's an intuitive thing I just think that serendipity is the result of how we're intuitively synchronizing our life so when we sort of look at synchronicity um it states now this i picked this one up from one of the the dictionaries it states it's the coincidental coincidental occurrence of events and especially psychic events such as similar thoughts in a widely separated persons or a mental image of an unexpected event before it happens that seem related but are not explained by conventional mechanisms of causality Now, this is how Carl Jung put it. He's a famous psychologist, Carl Jung put it. So what he's sort of saying was it's an occurrence of events that um, happen simultaneously with other people. Now, we've, I've talked about this. Oh, I don't know if I've actually talked about this book, but I've read about this before. And it's like... um, I got this this sort of a download, this what I call a download. So it's like this intuitive information coming through. I used to get these downloads a lot at night and you you would I would wake up in the morning thinking, I don't actually know whether I slept last night. I, I you just all this information is coming through, but you don't know what it is or how it is or you, you just know it's coming through. You just feel like a conduit for all this information coming through. And what they're saying is that this information is not just coming through to you. So it's intuitive information. It's not just coming through to you. It is coming through from other people. And this is often what happens when somebody releases something and someone else has got basically the same idea and they're in another, not another planet, in another country. So someone else has come up with that same idea. And I thought about that when I was getting my information for my book, Intuitive Flowers. 
and and getting an understanding of the what flowers are goals in life and they can be our emotional goals and how they relate. And I was getting all that information coming through. Now, all, for all I know, someone else was getting that information as well. Um, more than one person could have been getting that information as well. But did they do anything with it? Have they created anything? I've created a book. I've created online courses for it. I do workshops now, um, like the sip and paint workshops. I don't know if you've got them in America or, or not, but this is where you go mobile and they can, um, people, uh, the artists will take all the painting and everything and you you learn to paint. You do, there might be 10 in a workshop and you all paint the same thing. Well, I'm doing workshops similar to that, but we're doing sketching and we're drawing our flower. So we go through a brief guided meditation. Uh, we talk about the, the seed that's planted in your heart and it's your seed of happiness and what does that look like. And then basically I bring them back out of a meditation and they actually draw up the flower that they saw in their meditation. I am going to take it one step further where I'm going to actually use um, the pencil. The pencils I want to use are the um, watercolour pencils so they can actually add water to it and, and create a, a piece of art. Um, I'm not an artist, but... I know how to do the reading. So it's like a, a sip and paint one step further, like on steroids, because not only are they going to do the drawing and, and the sketching, create the artwork, they're actually going to get a reading on it and get an understanding of where their happiness is for their future. Um, and they can start working that way through it. So that's their intuition coming through. That's their guidance coming through. And then they've got it in a visual image as a flower that they can keep focusing on and going that's where I'm going I'm heading there that's that's where I'm going that's my happiness um, so and they've got the reading behind it so they have that understanding so when we sort of start to look at synchronicities if, if somebody else has received the same information that I have or very similar and they've, they've downloaded that information as I did and then use their analytical brain or their um, the logic to create something from that information, what have they done? How many more people are out there doing, teaching people how to use their intuition, teaching them how to feel strong and, and empowered within themselves because they're trusting who they are and trusting these, these intuitive messages they've got. So I wonder how many more are out there that are doing this too that can help bring it to the world. So it, it's really quite um, exciting when you think of it. So that's one element of synchronicity, where, whereas, you know, five or six of us in this world have received the same sort of information and some of us choose to do something with it and some of us don't. And that, again, is fine. Um, what they're also calling synchronicity or what Carl Jung um, called synchronicity was almost like those... Um, unexpected events that you you see happen before you um, and we, we class that now as um, clairvoyant or you, you're seeing the future or uh, what do they call that what's the other dreams for it where you're you're seeing the future oh my god my head's gone crazy um, sorry I've got a bit of a head cold so it's not I'm not thinking really straight we could go anywhere with this um, let me see what we bring in come on download it um, so yes yeah, so the synchronicity can be these uh, events these coincidental occurrence of events so and they just all have to synchronize to be able to get there when you think about it too like um i know i've done some of the cards when i've, I've played with the cards and it's like oh come on i need an answer you know like just give me an answer i, I don't want a fluffy answer i don't want a woo woo answer i want a yes no answer and you have a deck of cards, 50-odd cards there, and there might be one yes and one no. And it's no, the time's not right. Yes, go go ahead with where you, you want to go. Now, out of all those cards, I remember this one particular time, I picked the yes. Now, with what I was thinking about and what I was trying to achieve and where I wanted to go, you know, asking, it was a, it was a real yes, no. I've done it before where I've gone, I just want yes, no. Still didn't get a yes, no answer. But this particular time, I got the yes. And I thought to myself, how synchronistic. You you just, how does that happen? How do those cards get to that stage where what I'm pulling out is the exact card I need to see at that exact moment? And funnily enough, every card that you see is exactly the right card to see at exactly the right moment. 
But to go and ask for one like that and receive it like that, it's just, it, it starts to blow you away. You start to get an understanding of how much more in control you are of your life than you, you ever realise. You do not realise how much control you have over your life. And synchronicity is part of that. Now, when I look at serendipity, I see the result. I see serendipity as the result. We need to get things synchronised to receive the serendipity, to receive that result. And I just love the word serendipity. I don't know why. Maybe it was that movie back 100 years ago. I loved it um, with Meg Ryan. So that's, I think it was with Meg Ryan. Anyway, it was ser serendipity was the movie. And it was just, it was beautiful how all these things came into play to receive the, the goal. But there was a lot of synchronicity with it as well. So when I say you have a lot of control over your life, um, I wanted to go through a, a little story of mine that may help you. you may, it may give you an understanding of it. Now, when I was trying to get control over my life, um, I was testing the theories. You know, I'm a theory tester. I was testing the theory. Now, this theory testing I was doing was called um, visualisation. I have discussed it before, but I want to go into a little bit more detail this time. So what I did, I had a book called um, Creative Visualisation by Shakti Gwan, and it was my very first book on spirituality or this, this sort of thing. Now, this was one of the books the doctor had prescribed for me. So when I was dumped at the doctors and told to get something for my problem after having three kids in three years um they everyone thought I was going through postnatal depression and so I was dumped at the doctors and told to get something get fixed and I didn't even know I was broken so the doctor lucky luckily enough was doing uh, did alternate therapies um as I'm blubbering and crying and getting my way through this she actually said you know what I don't really think you've got that I don't think you've got um, postnatal depression you have got your faculties in order enough that you I don't feel you have but she had written out a note on one and a, a um, prescription yes that's when we used to write prescriptions <laughs> that's how long ago um, so she held up both of these in, in, you know one in one hand one in the other and she said you pick so this was how empowering and how important this was almost synchronicity too. Getting dumped at the doctors, hadn't a, didn't have an appointment. The doctor was new in town, didn't know who I was, didn't know many people around. She was an alternate therapist as well. So not only was she an MD, a, a, a general practitioner, she was also an alternate therapist and she had a free spot. Um, so how's that for synchronicity and, and then, of course, the result being serendipity? Um, so she said, I can pick. I've got a list of books here or I have got a prescription of Valium for Valium. It's your choice. And um, I had to take the easy way out, make three kids at home, all of, under the age of three, and um, an alcoholic husband. I definitely took the easy way out. I grabbed the list of books and ran. Now, with this list of books, one of them was Shakti Gwan, um, Creative Visualisation. So I went in and I purchased that book, um, much to my ex-husband's disgust because not only did I not get a prescription and get fixed, um, I also spent his money buying a book because we didn't. I didn't have my own money at that stage. Um, we, just, we just didn't get any. The men got the, women, the money and that was it. So... I thought, well, hang on, I'm not going to be able to do this all the time. I, I went home and I read the book, didn't get a lot out of it, got a bit out of it, didn't do too much. Um, but what it did do, it sparked me and I realised, well, hang on, I don't have to buy books all the time. I can go to the library. So I used to go to the library and I'd get 10 books out at the time. So, And again, using my intuition, if a book popped out, if I liked the image, if I liked the words, if I liked the colour, if I liked the font, whatever it was, whatever jumped out, I would take it home. It was free. So I could have it for a couple of weeks, bring it back, take out what I wanted and, and let go of the rest. But for creative visualisation, um, I did actually hold what buy the book and um, it's only a little tiny book. I still, I've, oh, no, I don't think I've still got it. No, oh, I'll tell you why. Um, but anyway, so it was, it was a great book. I read it 
and played with it a little bit but it wasn't until I had gone through probably oh, probably in the next five years maybe longer maybe seven that I went I, I had been testing theories from the books so when I got something that I needed to get an understanding of I would test that it wasn't until about seven or eight years later that I went you know what I'm going to test that theory I'm going to test Shakti Gwan, um his book on um, creative visualisation. I'm going to see if this works, but I want something concrete and I want to get a really good understanding of it. So this is what I did. And sorry, excuse me, I have got a bit of a head cold. Um, so this is what I did. I started to practice um, the visualisation. So this is when I was doing a bit of meditation. So I incorporated the meditation with the visual, visualisation. So with meditation, I could sit there. I would I do the passive meditation at that stage. I would sit there and I would um, visualise what I wanted the house to look like. So I would um, mentally go into each room. I'd be sitting, sitting down, but I'd mentally go into each room and I would visualise what I wanted the rooms to look like. We were living in a, a really old farmhouse and I wanted to refurbish it. I wanted to tidy it up, repaint it, get it looking a little bit cleaner and more modern. Um, even modern didn't matter. As long as it was clean, um, I just wanted to refurbish it type thing or, um, yeah, that sort of thing. Anyway, so I'd go in from room to room to room, except for the very end room, which was the family room, which was um, built above the big water tank because we were out of town. It was a farmhouse. We're on 90 acres. We're doing organic crop farming at the stage. And this was a big water tank. And then over the water tank, you had um, you had the bathroom area and a, a family room area, bathroom, laundry, a toilet, and the family room area. And that, that ran off down the paddock, but the water was, you know, the underwater tank was there. So it was all concrete. So um, I went in from room to room practice. I went into the girls' bedroom and I'd, how do I want the girls' bedroom? And then I'd go into my bedroom, I'd go into my son's bedroom and into the into the kitchen and into the um, in the rooms and just visualise what I, I could out of it. Now, when you're sitting there, it sometimes it's a little bit hard to do the visualisation and I would do it every day. It was an everyday thing. But what happened was because it was, you know, I, I was busy, I... I was pretty busy at that stage. I had um, working the crops. The kids were all being teenagers then, mm, fun, uh, running backwards and forwards to football and to work and different things like that. So um, I would just try and give myself a couple of minutes of quiet time and do this visualisation. But what it ended up doing was instead of doing a passive one, I started to do more of an active one. I'd actually walk to the bedroom door. I'd stand in front, got the girls' beds there. I would start to visualise what it could look like. And, and to be honest, I, I, can't, I can't actually remember it all. It was just, it was probably more of a feeling. What does it feel like? And the girls' rooms went from this dull sort of a colour to this lovely warm mushroomy pink color and and just the feeling it, it just lifted your spirit you know it just made you feel better um they had little single beds they you know there was a walk there's a wardrobe on the side well there wasn't a wardrobe on the side they had their clothes in these little old cupboards um because they there was no built-in wardrobes but that's what i was picturing some sort of a wardrobe they had all their stuff there and some sort of mirrors you know, so I wasn't picturing it really, really particular, but just more about getting this feeling about it. So I'd go from room to room and, and I would do that. So it, it ended up being like more of an active meditation where I would go into the room, have a think about it, this is what I want, go into the next room, have a think about it, this is what I want, go into the next room to think about it, what would this look like here, how does this feel, um, like in the lounge room. If it was winter, you had that real warmth because we had a, a, a fireplace so you could feel the warmth and you would, you know, you would feel it. You would feel it, not, not even visualise it so much, but the feeling came through. Um, and, yeah, it was just the kids lounging, watching TV, the, you know, everybody feeling relaxed and comfortable, no pressure, no stress, you know, so you'd get this lovely feeling. 
But anyway, what I would do, this was part of the synchronicity too, is we we would be going into um, one of the, I think we, we had, it wasn't Bunnings in those days, it was, we had uh, Mitre 10 which, I mean, we still got, but it was like those hardware shops, you know, the big the big stores like that. We'd have to go in there to get stuff for, for, the, uh, for the farm. So I'd go into the, the kitchen area and I'd have a look at the door handles and the doorknobs and, you know, I'd grabbed paint over the over this six-month period. I'd grabbed paint samples and went, oh, which colours do I like? If I was going to paint the house, what colours would I have? So I was mentally and physically towards the end collecting bits and pieces that is how I wanted the house to be so this visualization took on a whole new aspect instead of just sitting there in a passive way visualizing it I started to act in it I started to actively stand in the doors picture the rooms feel the rooms I started to go to the the the, uh, well we were going there anyway so it didn't go out of my way we were there and I just grabbed some paint charts and then I'd you know go through the paint chart so I'd start to do it it started off as all in the head and visualization and then it became more active and it became more um physical I started to actually pick and choose so I started to take from something from a a very spiritual nature just thought an imagination and went into a real physical aspect where I started picking what sort of door handles I wanted, what doorknobs I wanted, what was the colour of the bench tops, you know, the things like that, um, splashback tiles. I started to actually look at the different things. I didn't do a very good job. I'm not real good at that sort of stuff, but I actually did it, you know, and I started to put it all together. So from when I started this visualisation, it was probably... Around the six months it happened, and remember I was doing it just about every day. Towards the end I wasn't doing it as much mentally but a lot more physical in in that aspect. So on the 4th of December in, I can't even remember what year it was now, um, there was this almighty storm. And this storm, there was actually two storms that came together and, and collided. And they've collided basically around our area I don't know I can't say it was over top of us because it was around our area but anyway we were sitting outside and the kids we we had this storm chair we we called it the storm chair I used to love watching the storms come over the storms give me a lot of energy I love it so this storm this storm was coming over and it was really starting to get quite close and the lightning was coming through and all the rest so it was like no kids come on inside now And we were inside this family room and they were playing with those stickers, those um, little tattoos, you know, you get from the Chewies. They were putting these tattoos on and all the dumb ones they didn't want they put on me and uh, I had them on my legs and on my arms and, you know, we were just mucking around. There's nothing else we could do. The weather wasn't sort of real good for it. But it started to really build up. This this, The wind and, and the storm really started to build up. And all of a sudden there was this almighty sort of, noise and I, I don't even know what sort of noise it wasn't a bang it was it was just a noise and you sort of really you just sort of got a little bit well you got scared you got I did I got scared um and we were in this area and all of all I could think of was that this this is like a cyclone now we've been not trained but I'd lived further north in the northern Queensland areas and we get a lot of the cyclones we know how to prep for them and I'm thinking wow this is is horrific this is like a cyclone grab the kids and I've said quick into the safe into a safe spot so we've gone through the kitchen and as I've gone through the kitchen I've watched the kitchen windows actually bowing they were bowing the wind was coming in that much they were actually bowing and that really scared me and then I've looked up at the manhole in the kitchen as I'm taking the kids through into this safer area looked up at the manhole and you could see the sky the roof had gone we'd lost the roof so I've grabbed the kids and I've taken them around its corner into this safe area it was all full of the VJ the old VJ boards it was this smaller area it wasn't the bathroom I know the bathroom was on the exposed area I didn't want to go there this was on the the, the, like the lee side so it was protected pop the kids there and of course they're in tears and get the dog get the cat get the bird All of those came in. They were all sitting in this, you know, in this area. I grabbed mattresses off the um, beds because 
where the security area, the safe area was, it was a big glass sliding door. Now, I knew the glass sliding door was a one of those really toughened ones, but I just thought if something, if, if it is a cyclone and it spins around the other way, something could come through and smash that. So I put mattress up against there so the kids were safe and they were protected. Now, then it was like, oh, my goodness, grabbing things, you know, like you, you just everything was getting wet because it's all coming through, grabbing things. So grabbing, grabbing the photo albums and trying to get things like that that are, are sacred to you. Um, all my beautiful photos that I had on the wall, they just got wet. Didn't think of the big ones, just the photo albums, grab all them, move things around that we could try and protect that didn't so it wouldn't blow away. Um I remember running, going through the lounge, trying to go through the lounge, and and remember there was the, the concrete was in the family room, but in the lounge room it was wooden floor with carpet, but it was probably up like half a, or probably about a metre high off the ground. So the wind was coming in under the house and lifting the carpet up. So I'm walking on this carpet. It was like a bouncing castle, trying to get things, and I couldn't walk properly and bouncing around. We we're all in tears. We we're all frightened. I've gone to my bedroom and I just watch. I, I don't know, still to this day, I don't know how this happened. I watched the whole window get sucked out, frame and all, sucked straight out, and it didn't smash until it hit the ground. The whole window, frame and everything went out. That was pretty scary too. So um, raced back, did, did what I could with the kids, um, and then everything sort of started to settle down. Um, phoned up my neighbour down the road to make sure she was okay and she said, yes, yes, I'm okay, everything's fine. Um, she said, that was pretty scary and I went, yeah, and then she said, are you okay? And I went, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, we've just lost the roof. And she went, what? Um, and I was like, what? Well, you know, you just sort of, it's really strange how, how things take over, how you intuitively do things. You know, those kids went straight in there. The safety of my children was so paramount and everything went around them to protect them. But this was a really strange bit. Uh, so what had happened was the um, the police had come to make sure everyone was okay because this, like, tornado-type thing had gone, like, like cut a sway through through the, uh, the local town, local area. So they were going along checking on people. Um, the SES came and tarped up the house and then the uh, insurance, oh, no, we'd contacted the insurance. Lucky enough, we had insurance um, old for new insurance, so everything was going to be replaced, which, you know, so that's that was good. Actually, that was really good. Um, <laughs> and the... A uh, local newspaper came, and I've still got the front page one. I should pull it out to show you. But um, they were taking a photo of me, and I'd, we just got off from the insurance, and they, was, they said to me, um, could you stop smiling? We need to take a photo, and you need to look down. You need to look upset. And so I had to pretend I was upset. But in all honesty, we didn't know it was, I didn't know what the insurance was because that was all my husband's side of it. But all of a sudden, I've got uh, almost, almost a brand new house. Like the the, the, the um, builder came in to assess it the next day and he said, well, basically, you know, it's only going to take us six weeks or what, four weeks or whatever to, to get it built, re rebuilt, um, you know, get the roof on, get it all painted and everything else. He said the longest thing will be you deciding what colours you want. And, of course, I'd, I'd already done that. I was almost feeling guilty like I had created the storm and lost my roof so that's how strong your thoughts can be how synchronicity all lines up and all comes through and then this serendipity at the end it was like it was meant to be we, we had this horrendous experience but the result of it was amazing We've actually got the whole house redone and it just looked a million dollars. No, it didn't really. Uh, it was a farmhouse. Um, but one of the really interesting things was my uh, when one of the workers was there, he he said to me, whereabouts were you, whereabouts did you put the children? And I said, oh, just put them in this particular area here. Just It just felt like the safest place. 
And he said, look what I found. And in the ceiling, there's this little tiny, you know, those old photos and they were just like a, uh, like a cigarette packet size. And it was a photo, a picture of, um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really know who it was. It was a religious figure and I think it might have been the Virgin Mary or something like that. She had the rosary around, so I really don't know which one it was. Uh, I do apologise. And I remember going, where did you find that? And it was directly above where I put the children, directly above. It was almost like we had this, this spiritual guidance watching us. Um, I don't know where that came from. And you know what? I don't know where it went either. I, to this day, didn't know what happened to it. I remember laminating it so it didn't get ruined because, it, you know, I, I didn't want to, it, it was wet and we dried it. And I used to always have it near the telephone, this little picture of this beautiful, and I, I think it was the Virgin Mary. I, do, I really don't know and I probably should have worked it out, but I lost it. I don't know what happened to it. And when I did go to find out what it was, it, it had gone. And I still to this day don't know what happened to it because it was held so special for me. Um, maybe when we moved, it got put into something and it just it just disappeared. But one of the reasons why I don't have my creative visual, visualization book is that was one of the things that got trashed when we lost the roof. All my books got trashed, and I had a lot. I had Wayne Dyer, I had Eckhart Tolle, I had uh, Course in Miracles, I had um, Jacques de Quan. I had so many of those books because when I read them at the library, if there was ones I wanted to keep and use as a reference. I would go out and buy them up save the money up and go out and buy them. So, oh, Louise Hayes, um, Heal Yourself, all those types, uh, what was the other one, Annette Noonhill, um, You Can Heal Your Life. Oh, no, the, the, um, the Body is the Barometer of the Soul. All these books that I had, um, I lost them all when we lost the roof. So my theory testing worked. <laughs> Maybe try something a little bit, nah, not as hard next time. Um, but that was how this synchronicity came about, how it all came through. A particular storm had to hit a particular area and you know what had happened? It had hit at the power lines that came to the house and the holder for the power lines, which is this big bracket, instead of it being on the wall on a, on a proper um, area, it was on the fascia fascia or it was on the wrong part and as the storm hit it created a whip in this uh power line which is pulled on the roof and slightly lifted the sheeting and then the wind's just taken the whole lot off we lost all the center so that all these had to come all these things had to come into place for it to happen um we also, because we had crops and everything there too, so we ended up renting like two caravans and living still at the house um, and still working everything and still doing everything so we didn't have to come backwards and forwards. But these are the sort of things that happen. It's not, synchronicity doesn't always seem positive, but when these things happen, if you're meant to be going this way and you're heading that way, something's going to happen to make you go the right way so you're covering off on it. And that's if you're focused on where you want to go and what you want to do. So if you're covering off on your life purpose, you're going to go there. You're going to get there. So the serendipity at the end was I can remember coming back into the house and thinking, this is exactly how I pictured it. Now, even though they say it's with, with serendipity, what did they say? It's a um, an occurrence or a development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. It was by chance, yet it wasn't by chance. And that's why I think serendipity is an intuitive thing. When you watch that movie, they've still got the intention of finding each other. They still have that intention. So... It's not that you deliberately create it. It's just that it does actually happen because you're thinking about it so much. You're, you're putting it out there. So if you've got negative thoughts, guess what? You're going to get them. So stop. Stop. <laughs> Try to think more positively. Um, 
yeah, I've had a bit of a crappy weekend. I can assure you I've had the head cold happening, had blues happening at, at home, I'm ready to pack my stuff and go, you know, you know take my toys and go home. Um, I had not, a, not such a good week. But if I want to focus on that, I'm just going to get more and more of it. I've got to stop. I've got to change. I've got to look at it differently. And this is what I'm saying to you. It, in, uh, serendipity is an intuitive thing. Those are positive, by chance, happy, beneficial things that happen to us in a serendipitous way is because we have been thinking that way. We have been putting it out there. We have been synchronising the actions to happen without us even knowing. And then you create your serendipity. So that's what it's all about. Keep thinking positively. Keep going with your um, visualisation. One of the visualisations I have now is about being on stage and helping people. And, and again, it's not about how big the stage is and what it looks like. I, I try to get into that. It's about with visualisation, if, if that was... If that was your visualisation, right, being on stage um, and, and I'm doing it in a talking manner so I'm going to have to learn not to go um and ah as much as I do. <laughs> That's what happens. So you look at it from you standing on stage and what it looks like when you're going out. What does it feel like? You look at it as if you were standing there looking at yourself being on stage. How does that feel? And you try and get it from all different um, areas. So when I'm looking at myself on stage, I've got that real proud. Oh, you've done it. Oh, it's so good. I'm so pleased for you. You really deserved it. You know, you've got that feeling happening. When I'm on stage looking out, I'm thinking, I'm just giving. How can I help you? What can I do? And I, and I just love this feeling of giving. And I know it's, it's coming through intuitively and I know that's what it's going to be. So there's no fear. It's because I'm giving, it, there's no fear. There's nothing there. It's like, well, if you want it, you can have it. If you don't, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to give. Um, whether you want to receive is, is your choice. So that's how I perceive that and that's what I look at. It's, it's that positive, positive aspect. So if you want money, it's not about focusing on what a, a, a block of gold it's about focusing on how you feel when you've got money because how you feel is that you're not scrounging around for money. You can go to the shops and you can buy something. doesn't matter what it is. Just feel yourself. Go to the shops and buy something and go, whoa, I deserve that. Good on me. Buy something for the kids. Buy something for the partner. We can do this, but you don't have that feel of guilt and you don't have that fear of, of anything else because, in all honesty, you're not spending any money. You're just doing it mentally. And if you can do that mentally, you will be doing it physically. I can guarantee that. Absolutely guarantee it. The other thing too about money, and I've got to go, but the other thing about money too is be grateful when you pay your bills. Be grateful. I get my Telstra bill, my phone bill, internet bill, whatever it is, and I go, you know what? I'm really, really proud and really pleased that I can pay this. And you keep on going like that, even when it's tough, you still do that because what it's doing, it's allowing money to come back in. It's allowing that aspect to come in, all right? It might be allowing bills to come in. Only you can stop the bills. If you don't want a bill, don't, don't get it, put it on credit. Don't, you know, don't have internet. Don't have that sort of stuff if you don't want the bill. You have that choice. But if you do want that stuff, look at yourself paying for it in a positive manner. Okay, how you feel. Oh, my God, the bill's paid. It's done. So really concentrate on that. All right, so that's me for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry that the other lady couldn't be here. She will be here next week. Um, we'll have a few others as well, so I hope you enjoy them. Um, thank you all for listening. Subscribe to the channel if that's what you feel inclined to. If you don't, that's too, that's too is fine. So be it what was, was what I was meant to be saying. Um, <laughs> It's all good. It's all meant to be what it is meant to be. So more than happy with all of that. Have got the um, the workshops out now, so I'm really excited about that. Looking forward to them. We've got a couple already booked up. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the courses are, are, are um, coming through too. So you've got a couple out there. I've got a real basic one on actually how to do live flower readings. 
just a real basic. And then we've got the um, Blossoming Intuitively, which just goes a lot deeper and it covers off on a lot more areas. They're on the website too. So um, jump on, have a look, and um, I'll catch you next week because I really have to go. I'm talking too long. Okay, bye for now, guys, and have a great week. Mm -hmm.